Hello and welcome to the next episode of Through the Gun Sights. I'm Leo, the new producer on 83. You may have seen me in the last video. It's great to have joined the team and I'm really looking forward to giving you guys updates and insights into development as we progress. In this episode, we'll take a peep at the vehicle art workflows and look at the process of getting them into game. That's enough from me for now. I'll hand you over to the team so they can go through the process in more detail. Hi, I am Daru Lasko and I'm a vehicle artist here at Antimatter Games and I'm excited about showing you a bit of 83's vehicles. So let's get started. Vehicles are not the main focus of this game, but they could play a really important role in the battlefield, from an aggressive attack to giving support or an emergency escape. That's why we are putting our passion into creating a good range of vehicles for both sides of the conflict. And so today I will show you the creation of a military utility tactical truck. In the first place, we need to identify the model we will be working on, which can be a really hard task as military vehicles are nothing like civil vehicles. As these are developed in about three years and stay in the market about six years, including one or two updates. Instead, military vehicles can be in production for decades, receiving minor and major updates periodically as the technology and needs evolve. This means that a minor detail can make a huge difference, which is why it is so important to create a large benchmark of references. And even once this is done, there are still a few things to consider. First of all, these vehicles may be manufactured by different factories, which can make a difference among the different units, leading to confusion. Then we need to make sure that the unit we are looking at corresponds to the right conflict, as different conflicts may require different specifications. And last but not least, because of being in service for so many years and owned by different armies or private owners, these vehicles may have received different modifications and different maintenance, so we will always try to find new zoom references, although it's not always this easy to do so when we want to create a really specific model. After all the research, it's time to move to 3ds Max and create the blocker. We're using real dimensions and blueprints as a guide to create the first basic shapes. The blockout includes all the moving parts and key elements. This helps not only the animators to work on it as soon as possible, but it helps me identifying those parts that you, as a player, will see more often. It makes sense, for instance, that the most detailed area is in the driver's area, rather than underneath the chassis, right? Still, all the mechanical elements need to be accurate. References of tracks being restored and in the junky art are really useful, as you get to see and have a better understanding of form and function. Once the blockout is done, we then move to the high poly, high definition version of the truck, which is entirely done with 3ds Max. Having the large reference benchmark comes in pretty handy as even the smallest truck has hundreds of parts. And all of them are relevant. Uh, that's why even the understanding of parts that the player won't interact with is important. And as a car enthusiast as I am, that's important to me as whenever I'm playing a game, I'll be looking at all these details. And that's actually why I usually get good first. A great example of reverse engineering, for instance, is the two different versions of the track, which may depend on the map, wind chill down and wind chill up, with its specific canopy. Of the elements that conform these two variants, how they work are extremely important, from the metallic structure that holds the canopy, the wind chill hinges and the strap that holds the wind chill in place. It's a stage which I really enjoy, despite it can sometimes be tricky if you don't have a really specific reference or access to a real unit. And because vehicles have many, many elements, as mentioned, we have to limit the poly budget assigned to them. So baking to a lower version is a must. Basically, we create a low to mid resolution version in which we're going to imprint the high poly into. This version has to hold the silhouette of the high poly elements, focusing again on the most visible. This is a cheat use by all games to save resources, although nowadays, because of PCs and consoles being so powerful, allows us to have much better results because of having to bake less. Or in a better and more precise way, if you will, as the gap between the high and low becomes smaller, hence better in-game results. Once happy with our high poly and low poly, which they should match as close as possible, of course, we will work on the UVs which basically consists in unfolding the 3D into a 2D file. For this task, we started using a software called Reason UV, which makes this task much easier and faster. This stage is really important, as the better the UVs are created and optimized, the better the textures will look. Once ready, it's time to bake it with Marmoset Toolbag, 
if the hypolenlo poly match as intended and your wizard well done. This will require minor adjustments and will have a low poly mode with the appearance of a high poly. The final state is gonna bring life to our mod, which makes it the most rewarding one. Texturing, made with Substance Painter. This specific track has two textures, one for the main body and a specific one for the canopy, to be used when needed. The mesh is imported as exploded model, as it helps reaching every spot, even the ones that can barely be seen by the player. A reference benchmark comes in handy again to create the needed unique materials that are created for every single vehicle, as the way they are made is completely different. These materials are created layer by layer with their basic properties and then weathering and light is added, for them to be more appealing. Details that bring up realism and will enhance your vehicle experience and atmosphere during the game. If we are happy with the results, then we check how the vehicle feels in game and make the required adjustments, and so we are ready to move to our next vehicle. Anyway, this is all from me on vehicles today, and hope you enjoyed seeing how we are creating our vehicles at Tandem Other Games, and thanks for watching. That concludes our insight into vehicles and our episode for today. As always, we really hope you found it interesting and enjoyed getting a look behind the scenes. We welcome any questions or comments, so please post these below. And as always, we really value and welcome the feedback and engagement we get from the community. Keep an eye on our social media channels to stay informed and updated on 83's development. There you'll also find updates from Adam and the IGI Origins team. Otherwise, it's been great talking to you and I look forward to seeing you on the battlefield.